Ladies, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Please be advised that this movie has no nudity. I'm out. Come on, Annie. Let's go to the movies. Yeah. I just have to wee wee. And we're back. Just like the five musketeers. What the hell am I looking at? A country where culture means pornography and slasher films. If you had these boobs, you'd be obsessed with them too. Very exciting, big event. Everybody's excited, huh? We hope you'll make this a weekly visit. Bring the family. Bring your friends. We're Cinemanda's podcast. I would eat it. Okay. <clears throat> I don't have anything witty to say for this movie. No. Oh, yes, I do. I'll meet you half the way there. Much, much like this movie, there's nothing witty at all to Mm-mm. say about this. Mm-mm. Oh, man. Except for, uh, you know, Zola being in this movie from Winter Soldier. Anyway, welcome to <laughs> Cinema Madness Pot. You know how hard that is to say? <laughs> say what you need to say. It's too late now. We are, we are back down, with episode... I don't know if we're 40, 41. I think we're 40. I think this, this is 41. We have gotten 41 episodes into our third season. I think we need to like break it down for a bit for a while. Eh. Like like uh, Tears of Fears. I need to break it down again. Okay. No more uh, che- cheeky weasels. I don't know what they say in that song. I don't know. I love that song. I don't know it. But we are back once again with our uh, shipwrecks. We're celebrating shipwrecks. Yes. We're going to talk about the shipwrecks. Oh, my God. <laughs> It's Jeez. it's a running joke that nobody wants, Roman. <laughs> I kind of like some of these films. That's oh man, that's right, that's right. So uh, oh. explaining it again, we are talking about movies that made it to the bottom of IMDb's movie list. Movies that are five out of ten or below, and I think a lot of us chose a lot of twos and threes. Um, we are on our second movie. Although when you drink, it looks like they're sixes and sevens. <laughs> Straight. And then the lights come back on, and then you realize what you're in for. <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. So we are on our second movie, and this one, um, this one's a doozy. This one, this one's hard to celebrate. But we're going to do that, because that's what we are, and that's who we do. Wait. That's who we are, and that's what we do. Strike that. Sit reverse that, it. Reverse it. Uh, we are doing. What are we doing? Whose pick is this? This Mine. was this was Allison's pick. She really wanted to I'm do Allison. this movie. I'm Allison. Hi. And I'm Roman. Hey. Yeah, I didn't really <laughs> want to do this movie. I looked at who was in the movie and I thought, eh, that could be good. So that's hey. why I chose it. Okay. Well, what I is it? What I didn't is, read it. What is this movie that we're doing? Even though they've already seen the thumbnail, what the is the last movie? thing he wanted? The last thing he wanted. One of the worst names for a movie. I've ever heard. Well, at least it's consistent. It is. It is. It is. Um, it's made in tw- 2020. Mm-hmm. Released made, in 2020. Ma- yeah, released in 2020. Made by Netflix. Yes. So you know what that means. No taglines. We will make some up. Because they do not need to market. Yeah. This movie had no taglines. It sucks. Um, it sucks that they didn't have taglines. So what... Do you have a tagline for this? Allison? We like scarves. Okay. Scarves, 80s, smoking Willem Dafoe. The last <laughs> thing you wanted. What will you exchange? For what? That's that's yeah. my tagline. Yeah. What will you exchange? Oh, last thing you wanted. What will you exchange? You're trying to be serious. In the 80s, hey. weapons were not the only thing being sold to the Contras. So was Ben Affleck. Aruba, Jamaica. I don't know. Ooh, I want to take it. <laughs> Bermuda, Bahama. You're not coming back to the United States, Mama. <laughs> in a movie, in a movie not written by Tom Clancy, comes a bad Tom Clancy ripoff. Key Largo, Montego. <laughs> Baby, you're not coming. We go. Oh, you should have just kept it. Uh, just Key Largo, Montego. That's a yeah probably should have sorry about that man that's what if i ever have a son that's what i'm gonna name him key largo montego come here <laughs> i don't know why i gave him i don't know why i turned into miss cleo <laughs> key largo montego come here and get your free tarot reading oh boy uh there goes our jamaica demographic right oh, there. man our one person in jamaica no i'm sorry no I'm kidding s- it, it, it was ziggy marley too <laughs> sad sad we lost we lost our ziggy marley um, yeah, it was a Netflix movie. No uh, taglines. Uh, what the what the description on Netflix says: A veteran DC journalist loses the thread of her own narrative 
when a guilt propelled errand for her father thrusts her ooh, from by from byline to unwitting subject in the very story that she's trying to break adapted from the joan didion novel had i read that i wouldn't have chosen this movie that sounds a lot better than the actual film not going to lie. It does. It makes it sound super exciting. Yeah. Super intriguing. Yeah. Um, a lot of espionage, a lot of twists and turns. Right. There was one twist in the movie, and it was stupid. Yeah. Uh, it was forced. We'll get to that. Uh, it was directed by D. Reeves, who didn't really do much more than uh, single episodes of streaming series, uh, such as Space Force, uh, Electric Dreams, and uh, Upload. I love Upload. I do too, but she only did one episode. She's only done one episode of all of these shows. I did. I couldn't finish season two. I didn't finish season two either. It, it wasn't, wasn't endearing good, as yeah. the first. Maybe it got better, but um, I turned it off. No, it, it, it was definitely uh, dry. Yeah. More dry. It got too weird with her going out into the, the weird foraging cultist. and doing yeah. all of her stuff. That was not as endearing as the first season. I don't know. Maybe I'll get back into it. You're probably better remembering as you do. Okay. Thank, thank you. Save me some. The m- streaming time. The movie itself was written by Marco Villalobos. That's fun to say. Yeah. Marco Welcome. Villalobos. Welcome being Latin. And uh, D. Rees, the director. Yeah. The novelist John Didion uh, uh, also did some uh, well-known stuff like... Uh, uh, Give the title. Uh, Star is Born. Huh. Uh, both, both screenplays. Wow. Huh. That's two bad movies. Stars Born is not a bad movie. Yeah, we we didn't like it. I, well, I'm no, not calling, re- I'm not calling it a bad movie. I'm just saying yeah. I didn't, we didn't the like the remake it. or the, the original? remake. The both lady, re- both the, remakes. The Lady Gaga. Well, yeah. I don't like a Star is Born. I think it's a stupid story. Okay, but that's me. I am a stupid story. <laughs> it, it's it's okay. It's it's all right. Again, I confess that I like Dick Tracy. <laughs> Well, I like Dick too, Philip K. So ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> I like my Dick with special K. You know what? If you don't like Dick, you don't know Dick the way I know Dick Tracy. But anyways, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the last thing he wanted. Yep. And uh, starring Anne Hathaway, hmm. Rosie Perez, Ben Affleck, and Willem Dafoe. With a cast like that, how can you go wrong? Exactly. It was made by errors. Uh, it was made by Netflix for a budget of a hundred million dollars. Oh my heavens! Mm-mm-mm. All of that went into probably getting Anne Hathaway, Rosie Perez, Ben Affleck, and Willem Dafoe. Guys, I read the script. I'm not doing this shit. I'm not doing this shit. Uh, how about we we here's twenty it? <laughs> here's, here's twenty million dollars. Someone tells me Rosie Perez doesn't go for much, and neither does Willem Dafoe. The majority of this went on costuming. Yeah. And Ben Affleck and Anne yeah. Hathaway's horrible hair dye job. Oh man, she's she's just so awesome. She really is a fan. She usually is. That's she's why a I picked talented this movie. actress. She she's she was digestible in in this film. Where even though she was in these fantastic, she situations, was good. Yeah, fantastic situations that didn't make any sense for her character being All right. She was at least someone that I, I wanted, to, I cared about where she was going. It's like, oh, it, watching a tourist like go in the wrong part of town is like, oh, this is going to be bad, but man, you're awesome. You Best know, of luck to you. You know who wasn't very good in this movie? William Defoe. Everyone else. Yeah. like what? I completely disagree with you, but keep going. Well, uh, in my opinion. William Defoe, this was like his, his, it was his weakest performance. Well, he didn't really do much. He yeah. Was, he was probably not given much, to be frank, in my opinion. But it was Willem mm-hmm. Defoe being Willem Defoe. It wasn't Willem yeah. Defoe acting. Well, same thing with Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck looked like he he was just, ah, oh, shit. I don't know. Uh, ben Affleck was just like, he was he was Reaganomics. He ate Ben Affleck. Well, contract, uh, contract uh, <laughs> uh, obligations is probably what I call this one. Like, yeah. he's just saying there, it's like, Hold on, I'm supposed to sit at the scene, drink. No, no, no. Give me the real stuff. Don't give me right. Yeah, give me the real stuff. Don't give me tea. Um, yeah. Let me look like I'm halfway entertaining this journalist. The French black guy was the best guy in the whole movie. He was. Well, and, and him basically the whole French side was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that that whole thing was cool, especially at the end when you find out everything that was going on yeah. behind the scenes. I was like, that was awesome. Like a French Mission Impossible. It's yeah. Like, like, you why didn't you around. make that movie? Yes. 
Yes, you know, have a French guy go, if you look around the room, here, follow me. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm going to become, uh, um, yes. <laughs> here, here, follow me. <laughs> it's 7 o'clock. It's the guy who's reading the newspaper. I would like to buy a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> three, three o'clock, and they're all on me. Why are they all on me? Now let's run. <laughs> we are running. <laughs> That would have been a much better uh, yeah. espionage movie if it was just it was the French guy. Um, oh, man. When I first saw him, I thought it was the guy from um, Captain Phillips. Oh, <laughs> look at my eyes! I'm the oh. captain now. No, no, that that actor I've, I've seen him in a couple things. He's very talented. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, so let's we'll we'll get more into that. Let's let's talk about more. Fun. Well, let's let's talk about the opening because I totally checked out. Uh, before before the movie began because it was all about war and killing and I'm I just don't give a shit about that so uh, we'll we'll go with your lead on the opening Roman since you paid attention. Uh, well, I respectfully recuse myself for obvious purposes, so I'm going to give you the watered down and basic uh, dice version. I love espionage movies and I love uh, war movies. So long story short is it drops the main character in Rosie Perez in Nicaragua in 1981. Uh, specifically during that time period where they find shell casings and those shell casings spawn a additional investigation. Well, the additional investigation you find out is from the Atlantic Post where Anne Hathaway's character is a writer. And while she's in the middle of having a, a fantastic expose, expose, you find out from her editor that their funding's been cut and now uh, Anne Hathaway and pretty much the whole staff that was in the guts of Nicaragua are now uh, forced to do fluff pieces on the presidential election. Um, specifically, um, Anne Hathaway's character is forced to be the entourage of the Reagan um, ticket uh, during 1982. And that's where you basically see her for about a quarter of the film. Um, and she starts off as a total badass as a reporter. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. Like, you know, her, her character. Um, it, now, the film I have in my notes is the film reminds me of El Salvador in 1986 with uh, James Woods. Um, uh, All the King's Men, The Ides of March, uh, 13 Days, and Richard Jewell. All Those... my favorite movies. Okay, really? Seriously? Do you mean All the President's Men? Do you know who you're doing yeah. a podcast with? Yes, I know. Do I look or sound like I have seen any of the movies that you just listed? You know, 13 Days is kind of like 16 Candles, give or take. <laughs> <laughs> I just see Kennedy and, and Costner's character. It's like, hey, did you think I forgot your birthday? <laughs> well, what's uh, happening, hot stuff? Are you enjoying the chowder? Yeah. You're uh no, uh, um, All the President's <laughs> Men is one of my f absolute favorite movies of all time. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was I was really liking her character, especially yep. during the thing, especially during the whole uh, political thing. It felt like, it felt like Tom, it felt like a Tom Clancy script made by, um, made by, uh, shit, what's the guy that we like and Allison hates so much? Shit, what's the guy, Hunter S. Thompson? No. <laughs> uh, uh, what's his name? Does a he direct? A Does Few Good act? Men. Oh, um, Jack Nicholson. Oh, not Clancy, but Coons. No, no, no shit. Coons. No, no. Uh, West Wing. Oh, the dude. Yeah. Oh, that guy. This is fantastic podcast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We cannot think. The guy who does that show that you guys liked so much. The newsroom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. You can't remember found, some of your favorite artists. Where we found out that Olivia Munn could actually act. Nope. That was Olivia Munn? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry, Olivia. Thank you very much for tuning in, by the way. Oh, why can't I think, think of his No, thing. don't look. We're going to think of it. Oh, okay. well, okay. This we'll, is where we'll the editor it. will like, go 50 minutes. We're going to sit in science no. while I think of it. Science? Science. Well, no, we're going to think of it. I need to go to the bathroom. It's One eternity later. So it felt like a Tom Clancy script directed by uh, Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin yeah. on a bad day. Yes, it, like it, when he was when he was when he was on drugs, and had to go into rehab. And if we just followed her character, 
I, you know, I think it would be so much more interesting, almost like 13 days where... We did follow her character. The whole well, movie no, was about her damn character. Yeah, but then, then suddenly... If we would have followed French man, yeah, that will black Frenchman, that's his name, right? So, I have Black I have, Pierre. I have the first act. I have notes: political drama, tight and interesting, and that's how it starts off. It's very tight, tight. and interesting. Yeah, in that's terms. how I like my girls. I should not- have said women. That was that was awful. <laughs> It wasn't tight or interesting. Well, no, no, no. no. The first, the first beginning part when it introduced the first the, beginning part. Yeah, uh, the first. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, so as we follow the character along, um, we are then introduced to William Defoe. Well, before we were introduced to William Defoe, we discover tidbits about the character of Anne Hathaway, where she has a daughter. The daughter's going boarding school. There's clearly a riff. And then William Defoe character comes in, um, says basically, hey, look, I'm in town for one night. I want to meet up with you, catch up with you, blah, blah, blah. So she begrudgingly... We have to we have to say that, that it's her father, because you're making it sound like he's going to hook up with her. Oh. Ew. <laughs> Uh, maybe I I'm was watching ta- the wrong movie. I'm in town for one night. I need mm-hmm. to see you. Well, it is It is called The Last Thing You Want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Holy crap, I just realized that the that, that title is about him. Yeah, but they never make that freaking connection. I, I never made that connection. I didn't, yeah, I just now... I still don't. Because that was that was the, the thing he sent her on, and then he died. So that was, that the, was last the last thing, thing he wanted. wanted. Stupid. Well, he would... He no. would never spell that. Now they they introduce William Defoe's uh, character and they slow dri- they slow drive it and introduce the fact that he has dementia and and he's losing his mind slowly and his memories lost so on and so forth. But you find out that he how's your mother? That was my Willem Defoe. Kitty yeah. cat. How's Kit Kat? Kit Kat. Yeah, uh, kitty. No, kitty cat. How's kitty cat? That's yeah. what she said. And she was yeah, kitty cat. And then yeah. she was his Ellie. Yeah. Um, yeah, my Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> what? I, David, what I sent my mother to Atlanta? You're my Ellie. David. Call my lawyer. Oh, forget my lawyer. Forget my lawyer. Uh, let's go to the uh, condo and just stay. Let's go to the condo and stay. Why not? I liked that scene where we met him. Oh, uh, uh, in the bar? Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that, that wasn't... That you know that was William Defoe hanging out. It was William Defoe acting good. It's, I thought it's Willem Defoe. Willem, yeah. Oh, okay, I apologize. He's Both one of, of the grossest, grossest men out there. But he was funny in this scene. He was like prejudiced against gay people. It was funny. He had clearly had like this mm-hmm. messed up relationship with her. Messed up relationship with her mom. And he acknowledged that. He was, I thought he was good. He owned to the fact that he sucked. Yeah. You know, it's it was like, like he was just reaching out to just like, he was, this is one of those typical dads that hasn't been there for her her whole life. Mm-hmm. And then, but it was really sad when he was like, oh, was talking about Kitty Cat, her mother. And she's like, dad, didn't you get my call last month? Like, she died. It was just so yeah. heartbreaking. Like, did he get the call and he forgot? Did he just miss the call? Did he just purposely... It mi- It did to me. I, I felt like he was one of the most interesting characters to, from, from the start of that movie because I mm-hmm. disagree with you guys when it comes to Anne Hathaway. So I was bored up until this, and I was like, oh, somebody who actually seems like they have a storyline? But you, you, you don't like political thriller no you don't like no nobody asked me about my thoughts and this was my movie that i picked my first thought was politics and war why the hell did i pick this movie hey, hey for the record no one asked me why i picked skyline just say you're it. right but i, I but started you, and i was told no this is my trip but so, ah. like i wanted to stop yeah. and say pass i would like to give up this movie and pick another movie because i would have been okay with that I, yeah well, i would have too <laughs> I just we could have watched from Justin to Kelly but uh, I'd already seen that yeah I already saw that too I never saw it but that's the not, hottier than naughty that's not playing I've seen Jesus Christ. that's not playing the game I picked a movie I thought yeah. it would be good because of the people that were in it baby geniuses too why not get on that come on guys well I chose mine because of my newfound uh, fandom to uh, a, a movie series that Allison introduced me to you mm-hmm. anyways 
No, so so it was a political drama, okay? Uh, but I I was thinking about you when I was watching it because I was trying to think you. of the connection, Allison. Um, uh, when I was watching this film, I was trying to think of the connection, and I was thinking about the same thing when I was watching Torque. Why did you choose Torque? Why did you choose this film? And I figured that it, there could be some connection, and I I figured I overthought. I'm like, Allison is a brunette. She's witty. She's strong, in my opinion. So. Which is nothing like Anne Hathaway's character. You, yes. She was blondish in this movie. Well, no. What happens after she meets William Defoe's character is very stupid, in my opinion. So she she meets his character in the first thirty minutes of the yeah, movie. Right, yeah. right. The first, the fir- up until yeah. that scene okay. was a really good political I mean, thriller. Her and her and. Sh- where she she's pressing the um, secretary. Yeah, defense. that was scene. That scene was awesome yeah, in the, in the press has, conference. Yeah, she has him on the ropes, and that scene actually was pretty cool because uh, Anne Hathaway's character is pressing the high hell out of the secretary of defense. Secretary of defense uh, looks over his shoulder to his handler, which is played by Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck just coolly just gives him the slow nod or shake as nope, we're not answering that. And then uh, secretary of defense gives him the. Uh, um, uh, word salad very mm-hmm. quickly uh, gives the uh, press corps and um, it was just a very well done scene mm-hmm. that's why I said it was very tight in my opinion but I again like I like war movies I like political dramas I like character driven dramas so on so forth it had a Sorkin feel to it yeah yeah I, I totally dug it so where where we went wrong is where I don't understand the motivations to Anne Hathaway's character who's never fully flushed out why her character would then go beyond what she normally does and do a run. Okay, her dad gives her the number of his contact. His contact basically said, are you sure you want to do this? Well, it's it's the it's the it's the journalist taking over when she gets there because she yes. starts seeing the, the the guys with guns. She starts taking pictures of them. She you know she well, her her instincts kick in. Yeah, and that's that's where it's like okay, that's a little bit. I mean. I mean, that was the most real part of the movie. That's how any journalist would act, whether they're working or not. Uh, the, the, the story comes first. I liked how Foxtrot Uniform Kilo, um, or, yeah, with... Um, with uh, Sandra Bullock? No, 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 no. Not no, Sandra no. Bullock. Uh, Tina Fey. Yeah, Tina Fey. They're I, the same people to me. Essentially, I liked how that showed the journalist taking over in her curiosity around the area granted that was a different feel different sense of a film but it it showed but that was a longer sense where it kind of forced it into that little spot where it's like okay so listening land here's what happened is so Anne Hathaway's character um, does a job for her dad which never is fully explained why her dad would put her in harm's way why anyone in this god's name's earth would actually allow her to do this uh, so on and so forth. Oh, it they, was right here. Definitely not an Aaron Sorkin project. I can't <laughs> look down. Ah, uh, you didn't check well, the notes. Well, this all happened right before he died, right? His his um, his health deteriorated quickly. Right. Right. But like, don't you think she might have kept on with it because he died, and it's the last thing he wanted? I I don't, don't know. I don't because that's never spelled out. Exactly, but. that's my point in this well, movie. It, it kind of is because she goes there and she's screwed over and she's forced into this world, and she can't get out of it. It was yeah. just like, it was she, one bad bad example to it was one bad uh, scenario so, to another. So she's dropped off in El Salvador, um, and she's dropped off in El Salvador. Uh, no, Costa Rica. She's in Costa Rica, and so she Costa ha- Rica for your English speaking people. <laughs> San Jose, Costa Rica. San Jose, Costa Rocky. But yet I get stuff when I call him James, okay? Instead of Hames. Just saying. James. James. Mm, James. Was, mm, yeah, and, and, and the more I do that, the more I'm starting to sound like Pepe the Leprong, so I'm going to stop it. So, <laughs> anyways, so let's go ahead. So I also have it a note on this movie. It just yeah. says brown. Exactly. There was a the whole it was like the last movie was nothing but blue. This was nothing but brown. The cinematography, brown clothes. The cinematography was not good in this movie. Brown it had hair, a rain. Yeah, yeah, brown buildings, brown scarves. So smoking. A lot of the brown buildings can be seen in the scene where Anne Hathaway is 
dropping Brown. off cargo in Costa Rica to her contacts. She's exchanging in the cargo. She, she finds out it's guns. Surprise. Because now she's officially, because she's been investigating the Contra uh, affair pretty much this whole time, so on and so forth. So she gets the guns, great. Now she completely sees where it ties in with the Contras, and they pay her in cocaine. And then she's like, wait, what's with this cocaine? And she's asking people. The pilot, who she was supposed to get on the plane with, says, hey, lady, we're leaving in two minutes to get on the plane. So she, like a Karen, goes to the manager. I want to speak to your manager. Hold on. Hold on. She goes, finds the manager, essentially. That scene was so disjointed. Exactly. Because so when she went and talked to him, it almost felt like they knew each other at that point. A little bit. Like like there was a scene cut out or something yeah. missing. Yeah, like they've already context. talked at one point. Cause, like maybe it was one of the first people that they he, met. He I looked at know. her and was like, oh, what now? Yeah, like like he he've already, he've already dealt with you. Yeah, so the the character and he's American. They never explain what's he doing there. Mm. Kind of brush uh, off a little bit. He has a little bit of uh, um, Denzel Washington vibe in uh, Training Day, where he's probably a guy who's yeah. Service. You don't know who to trust. Yeah, so this guy basically Anna Hathaway watches her plane leave, and now she's stuck by herself in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. <laughs> Costa Rica. Pace picante sauce in Costa Rica. So in she's, Central America. Yes. Uh, this just north of Honduras. Just south of Texas. <laughs> south. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Just uh, south. Oh, boy. Let's never Is do this it. after she frames a taxi cab driver with the cocaine? No, that's after. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So then we follow Anne Hathaway's so character. on this Oh, movie. yeah. So... Oh, yeah, so Anne Hathaway's character. So um, her name's she... Ellie. You can just call her Ellie. By the way, they killed a dog in this movie, and I was totally checked out. I don't even remember. <laughs> you kill that. a dog in a movie, and I'm checked yeah, out. Yeah, that was during this whole scene mm. where they're testing. Was the it stuff. a Chihuahua? Yeah, they no. were just they were just they were testing the guns, and he's just like, <clears> oh <throat> yeah. Well, no well, animals no, 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 were no, no, harmed no, no. in the making it of was this a mine. movie. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's like, like, hey, release the dog. Okay, hold on, and, and yeah. explodes, and yeah. Anyways, it's yeah. Man, I have a lot of so, negative notes about this movie. There's dogs everywhere so, in there. And Hathaway, so the tension creates because the dude, the manager, if you will, just use, use my <laughs> the context, manager, um, basically uh, takes her around because they want to see where the cocaine comes from, and the guy, for some reason, goes, "Sure, yeah, why not?" So he shows her basically how the sausage is made, if you will. Okay. And Anne Hathaway the whole time is getting this eerie feeling, and the guy basically... How does she get an eerie feeling? I mean, she's only in a compound with people with guns standing right? around her. Yeah, exactly. And some grandmother. So, so the guy is taking her down this uh, um, darkened road, and he starts to go, I got to pull over for a second. And she's like, nope, you keep going. And the guy's like, no, I got to pull over. She pulls a gun on him, and then she shows her gavitas and makes him get out. And the guy's like, you're not going to get far the hell I'm not. So now she she steals the car. She goes away. You next see her checking into this hotel. And again, this is where the spy, like... Um, you skipped the whole compound scene. I brushed over it. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, we, like, we... Would you like to talk about the brown in the compound? Yeah, there was a lot of brown. There's just a lot of brown in this movie. So what would you like to add about the compound? Go ahead, please. It was dumb. It was a dumb scene. Okay, we officially talked about compound. She's 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 surrounded by these people with guns, and then she doesn't her 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 uh her her journalistic instinct does not take over until she sees a guy on the roof with a gun. She's like, Oh, I gotta take a picture of that. And she like frames this fr- frames this grandmother and be like, no, Oh, no, no, let you're me get talking your picture. About a whole another scene. No, that's where he takes her from the airstrip to that compound. Okay, you're right. Where where they're playing soccer and yeah. 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 yeah, that's absolutely correct. So she's, so yeah, that that scene, uh, whatevs. Um, so she is seeing where the the sausage is made, where the cocaine is distributed, so on and so forth. And she's in this essential village. Kind of think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger, the place where Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, in Predator found a lot of the people uh, that Dylan was looking for. Kind of imagine that, but it, it's like Bucho's place in in Desperado. That too. That works. So, we, but less brown. Yeah. So, 
after they leave that, uh, she takes the car. She goes to the hotel room. She calls her contact, says, you got to get me the fuck out of here. The guy gives her a visa. This was wh- this was also after she went to a store, bought terrible clothes. She's had terrible clothes. But was, she bought even worse clothes. I don't understand. It was the 80s. I didn't see no. one single shoulder pad, so I don't believe it was no. the 80s. It was a big, floppy, pink sweater. I don't understand why she wore scarves in every scene in the beginning of this movie. On the airplane, in the area, the maybe the she jer- had a hickey that she didn't no, want. No, 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 no. It was eighties, but it was just horrible. So why wasn't it wrapped around her chest like she was some sort of a uh, um, <laughs> some sort of yuppie? Yeah, some preppy, some prep. <laughs> but no. So we're back in the hotel room, and there's a lot of tension that's that's kind of forced onto you but speaking and, of tension and then it's things that you've kind of please. skipped over because it's not inte- it's not it's not integral to the story until they use it in flashback but she's trying to get info at the at the airport and she gets she gets kicked out by this woman uh she goes and when she goes to this crappy hotel she gets she gets taken to the third degree by the person at the desk and takes her takes her passport away and we don't realize that these these are important people in the story until the end of the movie, and that's stupid. Yeah, uh, it's it, so stupid. It's if you haven't figured it out, folks, that's called bad pacing and bad editing. Oh my god, the pacing in this movie is one thing that yeah. just absolutely killed it. Yeah. So that and you couldn't have made a more uninteresting movie about the the espionage. The, well, espionage and the and the uh, the the contra stuff. It's yeah. just the most uninteresting movie, especially when we get to uh, the gay guy. Uh, yeah. Armin that... Zola from, from uh, The Winter Soldier. And that will come up sh- sh- shortly. So now this is where it got interesting. So Anne Hathaway, she looked at her plane ticket, and they she noticed that they issued the plane ticket in the wrong name. Uh, her passport is in the wrong name. The plane ticket's in the wrong name. So she gets there. And she's getting ready to board, board the flight to, is it St. Croix or Aruba or one of those islands? If it's Jamaica, in, ooh, yeah. I want to take you. Uh, Bermuda, Bahama, come, come on, pretty, pretty mama. mama. Yeah. Um, Kilargo Montego. Montego. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, boy, Kilargo Montego. Hey, hey, Adam, sorry, I can't watch Kilargo Montego, unfortunately. Sorry, I, we, we got a baseball game, so. All right, Kilargo Montego, let's go. <laughs> If you don't get a dog, the next place that you move into <laughs> called Kilarga Montego. Kilarga Montego. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so just makes me sound like yeah, some sort of Latin so, general. So here's where the tension gets interesting. Yeah. By the way, spoiler alerts. By the way, but if if you want to watch the film, stop everything that you're doing. Okay. If you want to watch a three year old movie, go ahead. Yeah. Stop everything you're doing. Watch it now because we're going to give away the whole movie right here and potentially save you some time and money because netflix is just too expensive nowadays so. yeah, anyways so as so she's about to board a plane she goes wait this isn't my name she this isn't my name and then suddenly uh the taxi cab driver goes ma'am you left your bag you left your bag you left your bag and she's like uh that's not my bag that's not my bag the whole time she's like saying it's not my name, then suddenly, yep, fuck it, it's it's yeah. my name. Yep, that's me. I'm Ellie Mayer. That's but me. But that's not what the bag that's said. Me. No, Wait, exactly, exactly. It said her actual name. No, it didn't. No, her dad's name. It was. Her it dad's. was her dad's name. Right. Yeah. It was her dad's bag. They were trying to frame her, right, and basically get her in jail in Costa Rica. Yep, I got having, that. Having... I got that part. So yeah. she got it too. So the name, yeah. the the name yeah. got her got her away. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so they stupidly f- did too good of a job to get her <laughs> out of the situation. Customs did its job. No shit. Ah, oh, Christ. So she gets out. Okay, you're thinking, all right, great. She's out of harm's way. And the poor taxi driver. <laughs> then, he, then he gets in trouble. Oh, yeah. Oh. He was a dork anyway. He was, he was just trying. He was, Senora, Senora, you forgot your bag and you didn't give me porpina. You didn't give me a tip. Senora. Why did she have the wrong name on a passport, anyways? It was it was because they were it was looking for. Yeah, it was a setup. 
See, I don't. I didn't understand any of this. They were set. They were supposed. And to that's set why it was a horrible movie because mm. you couldn't even help somebody that doesn't so, know crap about war and politics like this movie. So now we follow her character. She's now. I am. I am watering over a bit of information. Please fill in the gap with any brown settings that you want to <laughs> set up with. So now we're. In we're a, about to get to the non-brown part. Yeah. Now we're in an exotic location. Uh, like well, St. Croix or whatever. Sort of. She gets she gets tracked down by Affleck for some reason. Yeah. We don't know why he was at that bar. Yeah, he was just at the bar. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Commenting on what she was eating. Yep. He was fat shaming her for eating good stuff. <laughs> well, it was the 80s. You're, they were always yeah. health conscious If of the you weren't 80s. doing cocaine. But he was, right. but he should have done cocaine. He was fat. He's a Republican. He's he, allowed to be big and fat he, and judge other women. He looked horrible in this movie. I was very, very disappointed that I picked this movie based on him. And then we get her whole unnecessary boob story. But well, like, no, that's a little bit further on because what we get now is she's in the uh, exotic resort. That's where we meet the French guy. Oh yeah, the the, uh, the yeah French guy with the the pink pants. Yeah, the French guy the with pink, pink pants are. He he nope. portrays right. he nope not not even touching that one. That one doesn't have any legs to stand on. Hi yo, but no. So the French guy uh, poses as like the best the bellboy or or bus boy the best boy the best boy uh, with my boy Key Largo Montego. So uh, he goes he gets in Hathaway's character Ellie out of harm's way. She before. The harm's way starts, starts noticing some shady guys and figures out very quickly that there's something bad going to happen right away. And what then ensues is essentially a massacre. These guys with rifles kill everyone in the resort. Right. It was like that episode of Archer where he lost his memory and he started working as a bartender at that at that tropical resort and ended up in 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 a gunfight. Exactly, but that only lasted two minutes, whereas <laughs> this lasted for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> or so it felt. Uh, yeah. So so now Anne Hathaway is attached to the French guy. She doesn't know she can trust him, so on and so forth. Um, and he's trying to lead her to certain situations. Remember, she's already been basically um, abducted. She's been threatened to be killed. She's seen some shady shit. She's had been fat shamed by Ben Affleck. <laughs> you know, there's been some hell that this girl has gone through. And the whole time like she Like Apocalypse had, Now, she's seen yeah. some shit. But again, she hasn't listened to reason. A thousand people are telling, go back. Yeah. Don't yeah. do this. Stop now. But Don't that's, pass go. That's, you, that's, that's, that's a journalist. You don't, boss, you don't listen to that. Her boss is saying, drop it. Drop it. For the love of fuck, drop nope, it. Nope. Just talk to me about Reagan being dead. She was selfish. She, yeah. was, doing, well, she, she, she was doing what she thought was right. Yeah, she was selfish, too, with the whole daughter situation as well. Yes. Yeah, she was flying too close to the sun. I mean, yeah. she she really wanted that. She wanted that story. Yeah. And it was all because that she wanted to make Rosie Perez proud. That's yeah. all it was. She wanted she wanted to do what Perez couldn't do. There was some sexual tension with the, ten, the two of them. Well, it's Rosie Perez. I don't blame. Well, you. when Rosie Perez picked up the phone in the middle of the night, the person in her bed was a female, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, they never illustrated that, but uh, I'm almost hundred percent certain that her character was uh, gay. I, I don't. I don't know. She was a lesbian, yeah. but they never. I, that's why I thought. I thought that maybe they had a thing together in the past. Um, that could be. You I mean, know, they were pretty close, but I don't well, know. Well, I mean, you're in Nicaragua in a, te- in a tent, so yeah, one thing well, leads Rosie, to another. Rosie Perez wasn't. Yeah, they were. They were yeah. there together. Yeah. Oh, the, I thought she went back. the opening of the movie. Yeah, 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 but she went back is what I mean, right? She didn't go to Nicaragua. No, no. she went back to the States. Yeah, she yeah, went Because she was with the dad did. or whatever. Yeah, they both did. They both did, yeah. Yep, I know yeah. that. I'm talking about she was mm-hmm. there while Ellie was all over in these other yes. places. Yeah, she was, so, yeah. She wanted. She was her taking to come. care of her dad. Yeah. Well, not a very good job. No, she didn't do a very good job because the nurse was gone. That was a dumb story too. The whole, the whole, the whole Willem Dafoe mm-hmm. storyline was terrible. It's just consistent. Like I said earlier, it's consistent. Um, it was unnecessary. So that's where we meet Ben Affleck's character. Ben Affleck, um, after Aunt Ellie gets away from the French guy because she was paranoid that the French guy was going to offer. And the French guy was like, oh, no, wait, come back, come back, come back. And naturally you think, oh, yeah, someone's trying to kill her again. There we go. That's not going to come back to bite her. Nope. Uh, So 
Ben Affleck's character uh, befriends her and sets her up. She goes, hey, man, you got to give me back to the States. He's like, I'm going to try to see what I can do. Oh, no, this is before she goes to the American Embassy, and it just so happens to be 4th of July. 4th of July. Yeah. And, and she's like, please, I need to get my passport. Nothing's going to happen. And she, of course, tries to push too hard. It's like, I can make people talk. There's a party. I can talk to people. We can make this happen. And Marine's like, ma'am, no, not happening. Ben Affleck shows up and goes, I got this. Hold on. Hold on. He was right there. Literally, he was the aide of the Secretary of Defense. I guess he didn't need to be the Secretary of Defense's aide for a while. It's like, hey, why don't you go down and check out this chica? They never explain it. Nope. No explanation. Go figure. Maybe there was a blue alien who was sucking out of the brains. We don't know. Uh, so... Uh, this is where Ben Affleck uh, befriends the uh, Ellie and really gets into her pants or gets to know her character a little bit better. No, they didn't get to know each other. They just jumped into bed. Yeah. Yeah, get into the pants, get to know each other. Better. No, they didn't trying... get to know each other. It bothered the crap they out of me. Did. He's looking at her for eating a milkshake and yeah. whatever she was and eating and scene... says, oh, th- this is your last meal or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And the next scene, they're in bed together. With their boob hanging out. Yeah, it the, was the most disturbing, weird, uncomfortable scene ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. They're both two very attractive people. She's been in a lot of sex scenes, as has he. And this was just so uncomfortable, yeah. the entire scene. I was like, Even is that her... Even when it showed him in bed, it looked awkward. Isn't yeah, it? I was like, is that her boob? What is happening? The 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 lighting was bad. The, 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 the Whatever she had over the other boob was bad. He's talking about his dead freaking wife. She's talking... I wrote down the quote. She's talking about shrapnel, wasn't she? She is rattling off... Seals wide spindrift gaze. And then she changes it to something else. But in the meantime, he goes, Diana loves loved seagulls or seals. And then she corrects it to something else. And then he's like, Diana had a scar like that. I'm like, what is happening? Did you guys not pick up that at all? Now you're just looking at the tit. I couldn't even, you can't even see it. I mean, you can see I the can, nipple. It looked I, like a giant pepperoni. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I thought that was, uh, I thought that was actually a scar when he was talking about the scars. Like, is that a nipple or a scar? It was just so awkward. Like, I, 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 I cannot answer that question. Of course not. I love you. Because you guys are guys. Well, no, I was that checked out by was, that scene. That scene was, well, I was checked out too, but that was one of the worst scenes ever. Next to, I don't know who said this quote because I didn't write it down. Somebody had the nerve to say, quote, you ever see a monkey drive? Buckle up. It's going to be bananas. What is that? Why? That's not a, that's not a good, that's not good writing. That's horrible. Horrible. So Ben Affleck sets her up with, uh, I can't, I can't compete with the bananas joke. You have to you have to ask Marco via via Lobos. There you go, Marco. Would you like to come uh, on to the show, please? We would love to have you. Who's that? The writer. The writer. Yes. Or not? Or you no, can ask the, the novelist. The person who wrote the book. <laughs> she sucks. Uh, we would love to have you on, though. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. So yeah, Joan Didleon. So, come, so come. <laughs> Joan Didleon. Ben Affleck said that she come defend going, your book he, on our on our popular podcast. He's going to work on trying to get her back to the states, but for the <laughs> time being, he's got basically a safe house for her to be at, and she's essentially the housekeeper of this. Um, oh my god, this was horrible! Do you watch White Lotus? He was like a character from the White Lotus. I've seen him in something. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was in. He was in the Captain America. And movies. he was also Capote in the Sandra mm. Bullock uh, movie that was not uh, Capote with uh, um, Hoffman. Uh, but he could. He was basically playing Capote without the voice in this movie. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. It, it, so it was just bad. He was telling her to go get a drink all the time, and well, yeah, but he treated her a little bit like a servant slash sister yeah. slash kind of relative. And the whole time, uh, he, well, he was setting her up too. But yeah. he well, was he was not part of the American setup. He was a part of the dad setup to 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 get him back for right. There's oh my god. Yeah, it was never completely flushed out. No. Well, he was conversing with the the quote unquote bad guy, the one that was yeah. on her tail the whole time. It now, would have been better to just focus on the black guy that was swimming in his oh, pool all the time. Oh, I mean, bu- let's introduce him. Bu- he looked like he was carefree and fancy free. Yeah, he was nude. Hey man, hey, he, 
good looking dude. High five to What's you, bro. What's going on? Um, so no, um, you can see him clearly when he was nude. Well, before before you find out that about maybe fifteen minutes before you are introduced to that uh, character, uh, Rosie Perez does cue you and say, "Hey, look, if you see, uh, I forget the uh, the hitman's name, Bird, or, remember. or yeah. Bird, or Satcher, or whatever. Uh, that's bad news. So yeah. if if you if you see him, run." So as it turns out he was with her the whole time. Oh, yes. Yai. So then what then happens is you follow um, Anna Hathaway's character, Ellie, and you see her basically be the maid for this dude for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> and and that's essentially like a couple weeks or whatever it is. Yeah, She's, she spends her days <laughs> stashing things, getting like mailers to send things yeah. back. It like takes her four yeah. days to try to get all she this she makes notes and she hides it behind the mirror of a bureau uh, yeah which they later turn upside down and they don't bother to check behind the mirror everything else is completely gutted the bed's turned over and it's like they didn't just check behind the mirror like that's the one all while she's promising her poor daughter in boarding school that she'll get yeah. to live in where'd she want to live and have a yeah. big pool california. and california and have a big house and a big pool because that's what rich people do yeah. yeah what yeah so what so capote's dead what's happening yes yeah, they never explain why he's de- nope. dead no yeah. no but you're you're supposed to think that it's that hitman guy yeah because they were talking and he, and, yeah and she 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 walks up on the beach while they were talking and even he's even like ellie ellie go get me some lemonade ellie i think it was the black pool guy dun 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 i think it was ben affleck <laughs> was he doing the black pool guy too it was ben affleck <laughs> well yeah was. It, was, it, was, so, it was him so as the film so now we're down to the last 10 minutes of the film Oof. so you see Anne Hathaway run to Ben Affleck, and again, there's a love interest that was pretty forced. Um, uh, so she runs to Ben Affleck, and Ben Affleck says, It's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. No problem. She's um, Ellie's character is overlooking the water, and Ben Affleck calls her and says, Ellie. She turns around, and Ben Affleck's character shoots her right in the head. And she. Falls. falls for the next 10 minutes <laughs> yeah. yeah backwards just, just pretty all much while talking while she falls yeah yep. yeah and then and then it reveals everything yes and then it reveals then the french people reveal that oh they were actually the french uh french contingent the cia to try to help her and it's like we don't know what happened we tried our best the whole time we had her right there and uh, yeah, the lady, the lady that that got her to, got her that got her kicked out of the club in the airport. That was her getting her to safety because the hitman was there. Yes. The, 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 oh yeah, she was funny. The 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 lady the lady at the hotel that gave her that gave her the other passport. It was to it was for her safety because the hitman was there, watching her get out of change her clothes and shit. Everything was the French intelligence yeah. trying to save her. Very Mission Impossible esque how the cutscenes were, and then you see the yeah. scenes again. It was pretty cool. Like that aspect was cool. I liked it. It was. It was right. Awesome. If it was about the, the French intelligence, that would have been a great movie. Yeah, but it was. It was just very convoluted. And then you see Ben Affleck. Apparently, he shot himself, and then he um, stated that she went psycho. Uh, the reporter was going for the story. She basically they spin it essentially as we know it as fake news uh spend it to a situation where um it made ellie look like she was went crazy and she basically shot up things and was heavy involved in a drug trade uh so on and so forth and they pinned everything on her um which they were intending on doing to begin with and they finally were able to do it and then ben affleck of course is sympathetic and the movie ends there you go congratulations that was a film folks Adam, did I miss anything? No. It was a stupid movie. It's stupid twist. The only realistic thing about the whole twist is that that's exactly what anyone in the Reagan administration would do to cover up anything like that, was kill someone and then make it look like they, they did it themselves. But that's it. That's the only thing that made any sense in this movie was the, the cover-up story and the French intelligence. Anne Hathaway's character, although, it, although she 
she did have a a believable uh, journalistic instinct. It was too little, too late. It wasn't enough to keep a story going. Uh, the I the whole thing with Willem Dafoe didn't even need to be there. She could have just gone to Central America to follow the story. She didn't have to do any of that uh, stuff for him. Um, have the guy from a secret window. Why'd you steal? Why'd you steal my story? You know, it's funny. Um, I have it in my notes. Uh, <laughs> ben Affleck's character, he uh, he he was the second choice. Uh, Nicholas Cage passed on this role. Wow! Oh, wow! wow. Nicholas Cage doesn't pass on anything. No, yeah. he doesn't at all. Like, he, yeah, he needs money really bad. Mm. So it's like, uh, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I gotta go play Dracula. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, I can't. I can't see him in that role. <laughs> and this is also mm-hmm. listed as the lowest rated Netflix movie. I can see that. Wow, even lower than that one that we we watched the really bad one that was based on the comic in in uh, um, during our COVID days. It was the it was a zero. It was a zero. I forget the uh, name of the film. It was during our COVID. I believe you. Based on a comic. Yeah. Yeah, I I forget what it was, but anyways, it must have been really good. No, it was really all over the place. But yeah, lowest movie rated on, on um, Netflix. I was telling Adam. So you, you did a good choice picking a, sh- a shipwreck. Mm. Yep, it was definitely a shipwreck. Um, no, so I was telling Adam when we were prepping for this is when I was watching the film, it kind of reminded me of a movie that possibly was caught up in 2020 with the pandemic in terms of being an unfinished product. Like maybe with a little bit more editing, a little bit more flushing out, a little bit more reshoots, things like that. It could have been a very digestible, passable film. I definitely think the acting uh, job that Anne Hathaway did in this film deserved a better fate in terms of some of her believability. Um, Yeah, her acting was great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was... She was believable as a yeah. as a as a journalist. Yeah, she she had a lot of the moxie, a lot of that that gumption that she saw in a lot of her other films. Uh, Lee Allison's Miz. sitting here shaking her head. What, no. Allison, what do you got? I disagree. I think this is one of her weakest roles I've ever seen. No, did it you the see? Role you or? did see um, Alice in Wonderland, right? I did. I did yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a, that's a bold statement. Okay. I said this is one of her weakest roles. That could be the other one that I think is weak. Okay, SWV. Huh. I said Anna's decent but doesn't have enough to allow her to shine like she usually does. Well, I can agree with that. Well, yeah. You can't shine in a movie that's all brown. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's all brown, it must be shit. Uh, oh, man. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's a lot of people that put their heart and soul in this film. So with that, and as we always celebrate cinema, it really did it was just it had the makings of a good story it had it a lot of potential it really did it, it really I said did. It could be a good political thriller but there's too much to unpack and the plot points seem to not get answered end of story i give it a d minus well on that note let me go over the critic receptions rotten tomatoes based on 56 critic reviews gave it a five percent Five. Five. Agreed. Just just not five zero. No, five. not fifty. A five percent. Uh Oof. critics reviews uh av- average rating of three point two out of ten. Mm. Uh the website's consensus read consensus read it'll be the last thing most viewers want to. <laughs> Uh, Metacritic, which uses a weighted average assessment of the film's score of 35 out of 100 based on 16 critics indicating generally unfavorable reviews. Nick Allen, a critic for the RogerEbert.com, uh, called the film incomprehensible to an almost impressive degree. A true Netflix original film paradox. Not even the pause and rewind button at the ready will help you make much sense. I agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> Benjamin Lee of The Guardian called this movie a two-hour film packed with too much and somehow not enough. The last thing he wanted is a thing that no one wanted. Mm-hmm. hi Those are harsh, harsh reviews, y- but they are, well, they are well earned. Yep. You suddenly regret naming the film that. It's like, oof. 
Oof. Oh, and it's the name of the book, too. Yeah. Well, um, maybe the book is better. Maybe somebody should read the book. Yeah, I bet that's what it is. I bet the book is a great, like, political Not thriller. Not it. <laughs> no. Not it. <laughs> nope. Mm. I, 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 uh, I have no interest in that at all. For Roman. previous uh, uh, divulge information, I recuse myself from this. Okay. So, nope. You can read the last half of the book. Just read the Cliff's Notes. Duh, it's like Cliff's Notes. Well, they always they they always joke about how the quote unquote Netflix adaptation of things are terrible. What's another one? Uh, like Death Note, the adaptation of the anime. Yeah, I don't know. That with, is. Also with Willem Dafoe. Yeah, he was really good in that movie. Willem Dafoe makes me want to take um, a shower. Cowboy Bebop. Mm-mm. Oh, I like the anime on Cowboy Bebop. I so, are there anything that's not anime that has been? No, the joke is about anime oh, and Netflix. Okay. Uh, adaptations. Yeah, you know, Godzilla's singular point was pretty good. But that was an anime. Yeah, it wasn't. I'm that. talking about a Netflix adaptation of an anime. Oh. oh shit. Be nice. You're getting angry. No, you're, I'm being clear. You're both being loud. Do you want to play a game so we can end this yes, last thing we want? Yes, I want to play a game. <laughs> Please. Well, I gave it a D minus. What did you give it? <sighs> yeah. Nothing deserves an F, in my opinion, so I will give it a D. I give it a D minus. I'm sorry, an F way. I love you. I mean, have you seen her in Catwoman? That wasn't very yes. good either. So. Yes, okay. she was in Catwoman. She yes. was Catwoman. Yeah, that's what I meant. Her heel was against the guy's throat. Okay, so we are going to do a game about wanted characters in film. Unwanted characters. No, in film. wanted. Oh, on, wanted. Wa- on wanted characters in film. Yeah, like, I'll like. Uh, I'm going. I'm not going to give you any. I'm, it's James it's McAvoy. Really, it's really self-explanatory. Okay. So I'm not going to give you an example. Yep. So the most of them are um, mm-hmm. characters. I'm going to give you the character in the movie, and you tell me what the name, what the name of the movie is. I'll even give you the year if you need it. So where does okay. the wanted part and come in? They're the mo- they're wanted characters. Okay, I get it now. So okay. like Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid example. Um, I also have some that I will give you the actors in the movie, and you name the movie. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. Richard Gamble. Adam. Yes. Uh, the Fugitive. Very good. It, and it's it's Kimball. Yeah. Oh, I wrote Gamble. Dr. Kimball. Thanks for correcting me. Next. <laughs> Doc McCoy. Adam. Yes. Damn it. Uh, the, 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 the shit. Tombstone. Yeah. Wrong. Roman. I thought it was Tombstone. I uh, this it. is a 72 movie. Oh, a uh, Butch Gantz scene. No. Shit. 72 movie. Don, Doc McCoy. Doc McCoy, not Doc McStuffins or whatever from Tombstone, or Doc whatever the last holiday. Name is. Holiday. No. Oh, Star Trek. No. Star <laughs> Doc. Trek. Doc McCoy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's the movie called The Getaway. Oh. oh. You know they remade that with Corey Haim. Nope. Is he Doc McCoy? No, he's the son. T. Dickinson and L. Sawyer. Can I get the year? Oh, I know that one. 91. L. Sawyer. Uh, Roman, uh, would that be The Untouchables? No. Damn. In 91? Yeah. Yeah, oh. Untouchables was like 89, 91. Hmm. Um, it's, not, it's not Freeway, is it? Nope. I will give you oh, a big hint. Yes. Chase. No. Damn it. I will give you a big hint. The reason I'm giving you just the initials is if I gave you the first names, it would give it away. T. Dickinson and L. Sawyer. True Romance? Nope. Nope. Thelma and Louise. God uh, damn it. Yeah. John Dillinger. Oh, um, Roman. Yes. Uh, that would be Public Enemies. He called his name first. Okay, but he said Untouchables. Oh, you're wrong. Public Enemies. Yes. Bonus points for who played Don, Don Johnny Dillinger. Depp. Very good. Yeah. Frank Abagnale Jr. Uh, Roman, yes. Shawshank Redemption. No! Wow. Adam. Yes. Catch me if you can. Yes. Damn! Man, you were really sure on that one. <laughs> oh, man. Not Frank Abagnale. Not Frank <laughs> Abagnale. <laughs> um, knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Who says that? Tom Hanks. He's oh. like, I can't be funny. Knock, I can be knock. funny. Go fuck that. yourself. Yeah. Um... 
Okay. Robert Downey Jr. and Jake Gyllenhaal. What movie? Uh, Roman, the other guys. Wrong. Shit. The other guys isn't about a wanted person. Mm-hmm. You, you got to think. This it is, is now. Wanted. A a. They're trying to find somebody that's wanted. A fugitive. A criminal. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I get okay. it. Okay. I just suck at it. <laughs> Two thousand seven. Robert Downey Jr. Jake Gyllenhaal. What movie? Zodiac. Yes. Okay. God oh, damn it. Wait, no, they're not wanted. The Zodiac Killer's wanted. I know. Oh, my God. Yeah. Is this a stupid game? I no. thought it was no. pretty good. No, it's not. I'm winning, so I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah. I, yes, you're right. The Zodiac Killer. But what would I have said? Dude. Zodiac Killer. What movie no, is that no, from? whoever played the Zodiac Killer. The, the you, don't that, you don't know. You don't know. No, the guy that they had, um, because they played the reporters that were covering the Zodiac Killer during the time. That's like period. me saying John Doe. What movie was that? Well, no, 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 no. The actor that portrayed him just... just there was no actor. <laughs> right. Yes, let's continue, please. But do you know who what movie John Doe was in? Uh, yes. Yeah, we're Fight Club. Seven. seven, very Thank good. Thank you. Oh. That doesn't count. I got I'm my Fletcher movies mixed up. I got one. Okay, I'll give you one point. I got one. Alabama Worley. Roman Silence of the Lambs. Oh, my God. No. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really hurt. Alabama Worley. True romance? Yes. Oh, Sorry, you should have said uh, Rugrats music. Fuck you. <laughs> I love you. Um, I think this is... This is way. more fun than the movie. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland and Reese Witherspoon. Freeway. Adam, Freeway, yes. Don't forget to yell your name out. He was so creepy in that yeah, movie. His face. Okay, it's six to one, so you won, but this is the last one. Let's Come keep on, going. Roman. Ian McShane, Bridget Moynihan, Willem Dafoe. Two thousand fourteen. Ian McShane. John Wick. Yes, very good. Oh damn. Good job. I was like, when was Willem, which one was Willem Dafoe in? It was one or two? It was one. It was. I forget who was so, in that one. So those are those are wanted people. Yeah. That was fun. That was yeah. that was most more like I said, more fun in the movie. Thank you, well, thank you, thank you. So, what else do we got going on? We got our next episode coming up. Yeah, we got we got our we got our third episode in the shipwrecks coming up. Um, we have. Uh, I am still putting out the alien deep dives. Uh, they've kind of done mm-hmm. gone back to back up because of uh, some health issues I've I've gone through. Nothing nothing alarming. I'm I'm okay, everybody. Um, but uh, I've started to get back up on that. So. Uh, you, there may be an episode out so far about Ridley Scott, or there may or may be coming soon. Uh, I just got to get it edited and, Great and Scott. up there. Great Scott. Um, it looks like there's going to be three or four more episodes just on Alien alone before I even get to Aliens. So uh, I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, let me know. If you aren't, let me know. I'd like to know about either. How about you, Roman? You got uh, your uh, yeah it's thing. Kinda- yeah, uh, depending on when this release is going to be around me and uh, Allison's birthday, so uh, uh, I am going to be reflecting on, on uh, movies that I saw around my birthday time period. Some uh, great ones that will probably be on the um, from the Isles piece, like Species, uh, for example. I saw that on my birthday. Um, I also saw Cats and Dogs on my birthday. Um, I also saw Chicken Run on my birthday. So really, really interesting stuff that's really going to get those likes. Cats and Dogs, is that the... Oh, no. I was thinking must love dogs. That's that's the movie about actual cats and dogs. Yes. Yeah. With with the with, That was cute. It was cute. It was cute. With Jereen Garofalo? No, that was thinking of that. That's must, must love, love that's dogs. That's truth about cats and dogs. That's truth about cats and must dogs. Must love dogs, dogs is Diane Lane. Oh my god, all those damn and John Cusack. All those damn Wait, wait, which one is where where the dog goes to heaven? All and, dogs and, go uh, to heaven. And yeah, uh, yeah. Are Marley you sure? and me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so I, I look for that coming out. Allison, you got anything coming up with uh, I mean, Say Anything? I just kind of like pull Say Anything's out my butt. Like, whatever I want to say. Speaking just do. of brown. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I went right. and saw Little Mermaid, just want to talk about it. I don't write a script. I literally just talk. And that's probably why I ramble. And it's just... Hmm. 
Yes. You have the highest numbers of all of us. I so. don't think I do. You do. I, well, I just ramble. I know I watched, I rewatched another movie that I loved as a kid and now watching it as an adult, it's terrifying. So I might do a report on that report. A, a report. thing on that. And Baby then. Long stocking, I feel the same exactly. No, way. I'll tell you what it is off the air. Okay. Off the air. And then my child is dragging me to a bunch of movies. So maybe I'll do like a, say anything about that, about how bad some of these movies are. I well, I know a good looking guy who's being dragged to movies and he uh, he does reviews on them, quick reviews. Mm-hmm. So maybe you could do that. Just saying. Maybe I could do a review on you doing reviews in the movies. I would love to review you. You know, maybe I'll do oh. a review on you. Go doing for it. Alice and everything. Go yeah, I uh, recently listened to Alan Say's. But you don't. Nobody Alice does. Says? Nobody yeah. listens to my say anything. I do too. Yes, I do. Because you have I to do. edit it. Oh, no, I no. Do. I listen to them when they, when they premiere and I give them a thumbs up. Ooh. I give them a thumbs up. I'm There's a reason why they have two thumbs up (laughs) (laughs) fair enough fair enough thank you high five Uh, that's funny yeah (laughs) anyway so that's what we got going on uh adam me yeah uh thank you for tuning in do you tune in the podcast i don't thank you for clicking on this um I hope you're enjoying our our, our uh, kind of change from just totally gushing over movies to critically talking about these uh, so-called shipwrecks. But even movies we don't like, we find good things in. So uh, we'll see you for our last one of Shipwrecks. And don't forget to keep celebrating cinema. Aruba, Jamaica. Why aren't you singing that song? You're making up your own song. Montego Cagarago. Oh, you're singing Depeche Mode. I like it. <laughs>